place and I've worked in running, but also in it for five years or so. And so we get a lot of people in North Shore who have never run before, who want to start running. Mm -hmm. And the argument almost sounds as if we should immediately be putting them into minimalist shoes so that they develop proper form from the get-go, which kind of goes with these. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if, if uh, this is this is the rub because you know if you put somebody and, and I have a tendency honestly to, to, to really be way more judicious about motion control and all that kind of stuff. I'm not a huge fan of that, but at the same time, it, it sounds as if the argument is being made is rather than um, let develop let somebody develop bad habits that we have to correct, begin with a minimalist shoe that they don't have the opportunity to correct bad habits. And I don't know if, if we're ready to do that. I don't know if the people are ready to do that because if, if somebody comes in and says, I've never run before, but I'm, I'm training for a 5K this summer, I, I, don't, I don't quite know if that's the answer for them. And, and I don't know if they're saying, well, we've got a class coming up in a month. Um, you know, people are enthusiastic and they want to go. So what do you say about that? Um, um. <laughs> My perspective, <laughs> uh, I think you, if, if, again, if you analyze their foot structure, and they, someone came in and they were not a runner, and they were just starting, to expect them to buy a pair of shoes like these and go out and run good form for their first 5K ever, I think is a recipe for disaster, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, if they were really dedicated, focusing on their form, absolutely, you know, create good habits right off the bat and get them into this. But I want to say, I would willing to bet the majority of the population could not do that. I think they'd be in trouble. I think if they mixed it with form and mixed it with proper knowledge, absolutely. Um, if, they, if they were just going to go out there for a good health and want to achieve that first 5K or 10K or whatever, I personally would think it'd be a recipe for injury. I mean, just based on my experience and what I see. Like learning anything. Um, the more variables that are being changed at once, the more complicated it gets. So for the beginning runner who's starting, probably the cardiovascular fitness and his body changes, that's quite a lot of adaptation already. Um, throw in their you know, form and, and foot mechanics, and that's an extra variable that's being changed. And I think a beginning runner could benefit from form training to begin with, but they probably may enjoy that cushioning at first, and grad, you know, I would be in support of gradual step downs in, in terms of the footwear. I would have the exact <laughs> polar opposite. <laughs> <laughs> no, keep, keep, keep in mind, I'm a I'm a high school teacher. Uh, I, don't, it, I would say if if people are going to start running, I mean, the first thing you should teach them is how to run. I would be the equivalent of teaching somebody how to do math by giving them a calculator and saying, well, this will get you by until, well, we can teach you how to really do it. Having said that, I think what constitutes good form isn't necessarily something that takes a tremendous amount of time. <clears throat> like, I don't think it's something that requires uh, you know, months of in-depth study. And you could teach somebody how to run with pretty decent form in five minutes. Um, you teach up these elements, watch for this. Now keep in mind, what Brandon would do would be much more thorough. I mean, that would be the ideal, or a class where they're going to learn and they can have their data analyzed. But um, again, I, I'm, I'm pretty biased on this, admittedly, but uh, if somebody wanted to run and you just put them in cushioning shoe, heavily cushioned shoes because it would basically hide their bad form and allow them to run. I mean, that they're going to develop a lot of bad habits that then you have to go back and reteach them. I don't know. That's the crux of my question right there. Do you, de do you allow them to develop bad habits to begin with that you then have to go correct as they develop their running career? Or if, if, you, if you agree with the argument that a, that a less cushioned shoe promotes better form in and of itself, do you immediately start somebody off that way? I mean, and that's... I would. Yeah. I think it's so dependent on that person. Yeah. It depends on so many variables. 
what are the, what are they, what is their long term goal? Are they going to become a runner? Yeah. Are they just doing it for general health and they're going to fade out of it quickly? How sedentary they are? You know, what what is their current condition? They've done a number of wonderful studies where they've taken hundreds of moderate to heavy pronators, and you have this hundred that go through life with injury after injury after injury. They have orthotics, they have motion control shoes, and it helps tremendously. And then you have this group over here, they pronate just as bad, they go through life with zipola injury, and there's a lot of them are marathon runners, and you know, and some are just weekend warriors, and they can wear a neutral shoe, uh, a minimalist shoe, and, and there's really no, no one has a scientific reason why one group can do well and one group can't. There's a lot of good theory behind it. One of the more um, important studies that kind of touches on what you mentioned is just their general upbringing, their history. People that have been barefoot more likely as a young, young child and through their adolescence, uh, they build that intrinsic strength in feet. 